It's J Mo, the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest. We gon' What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show for Snowfall, the final season, the final episode, the finale. Wow, what a way to go out. Damn, I don't know if it's worse that Franklin is still alive but went out the way that he went out or if he would have been killed or go to jail. Um. Damn, Franklin. I think he could have still found some other ways, but he started to self-destruct when he couldn't get that money and V left him. And then with his mama not even having a word to say, um, she could have signed that house over to him. But she didn't want him to have any money. I guess she didn't want him. That was her way of making sure he didn't get back into the dope game. Is that's what that was. And if she would have said anything, it probably would have made matters worse. So I guess she figured if he'd have got big money, like a hundred grand or something, he might've got back into the dope game and who knows what would have happened. So, but she, Damn, man, it's like her, her son is the walking dead now. He about to be, because he a wino right now. An alcoholic, like wino to the point where you can't function, you know. So he only walked away from smoking that Rizok. He ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to lose. And the company that he about to keep, uh, it ain't gonna be too good So let me give a shout out To all y'all that was live Chatting with me during the finale Damn that was good uh, What an episode They did kind of wrap up A lot of things I'm about to get into some of these Comments So many great comments I appreciate all y'all for coming through um, Damn man Franklin what is going on? Damian Kenny say, I've been watching. What is the name of Franklin and V Child? They never said. So we never learned unless I missed it. If anybody heard it, please let me know in the comments. Did they ever say the name of Franklin and V Child? Um, I didn't see it. So I don't know. D Renee. That's an excellent question, and that's the one thing that I was going to get to because that's one of the things that I said would be a way for him to be different from all these other people is he still had a jet that he could flip. And D. Renee asked the question, what happened to the jet? That's a great question. He still had that jet, right? What, what was up with that? He couldn't sell it. He couldn't make no money, do something, start giving private jet tours somewhere, be a private pilot. He had a pilot's license. He didn't want to be a private pilot. But, you know, I don't know. Damn. Is uh is uh damn, man. I feel so bad for Franklin, man. I mean, you know, that story actually is more true than a lot of people may realize. Now, I've seen something similar. Now, of course, it didn't happen because of the CIA. It happened because while they were selling drugs, they started dipping and dapping, and then they don't know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? And that's a lot of ways that some people, and of course, that they, uh, they wasn't on no Franklin Saint level, at least I don't think so. Um, but I was younger and they were making money and flashy and things. And by the time I was in my teenage years, they wasn't so, you know, prosperous. So I don't know. Um, let's see. Were well, you guys? Uh... <laughs> they say what happened to the plane? V took it. You know what? You guys might actually be right. 
she did have enough money to hire a pilot. And he did say that they raised her, this child, his son, somewhere that's not in the United States. So she could have took that plane and his money and and bounced on his ass. Just like mama said. She actually did him worse, though, because, uh, you know, damn. She got him at the very end. So she got him at the time where he could least afford to bounce back. Everybody else that got him in the game got him when he could still find a way to bounce back. When she got him, she got him when he was like, oh, no, that was it. That was his last straw. And she got him good. She got him good. I told y'all, everybody that watched with me, I said that once he put his hands on her, it's a wrap. She was gone. I said that I even asked the ladies how many uh, got that zero tolerance because I hear a lot of women uh, say that, especially nowadays. I don't know if the Me Too climate may have had something to do with it. A lot of ladies say no. So, you know, I knew it was over. Um, now, 100 said Leon didn't turn on Franklin and he gave him 500K. That's true. But he did tell Leon he about to take that three million from him. Which when Leon told him he had three million, I'm like, why you tell him that? Why you tell him how much you have? So that that was crazy to me. But Leon thought, hey, well, he knew. Hey, he ain't gonna be able to do nothing. He by himself. I'm sitting here with NWA and the posse up in this piece. <laughs> and so Baby Leon is starting to work in the music career as Easy E. With Wanda is Miss Chalet. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, no, no more lies. Sounded like uh, the, the Oscar the Grouch singing. Anyway, uh, we got Lil J in the comments to say, uh, yeah, if he would have never put his hands on her, she would have still been there by his side for everything. I think so, too. How many of you all think that V would have stood by Franklin's side if he didn't put his hands on her? Put a 1V if you think she would have still been there for him. Put a 2V if you think that she would have bounced no matter what. I mean, I thought she was going to bounce no matter what for the longest. And she had better opportunities and a chance to possibly get more money. At least she had it. Her mother had her saying, we going to get this and you, we can bounce. And, uh, you know, she didn't do it. So I'm going to go with 1V. I'm going to think that uh, if he didn't put his hands on her, She'd be all right. You know. Black Pride. He'd say, I'd rather them had killed my boy, LOL. Seeing him become Alton hurt. I know. Worse than Alton. But, yeah, it did hurt. And uh, it's almost like The Walking Dead. That's why if you anybody ever watched The Walking Dead or any of those type of zombie movies, they always try to kill themselves before they'd rather just be walking around as the walking dead. Like they always, when it's in the, in the shows or the movies, the main characters get bit. They always be like, don't let me turn into one of those things. So that's worse. You know, I'm looking, I'd see damn near everybody put a one V Danny girl said two V and Lisa Phillips. We got a couple people, but for the most part, uh, you know, I think think that's it. She might not have looked. Now, Danny girl say the money ran out, so that's why she choosing that that she was about to bounce. Um, but 
So you think that even if he didn't put the hands on her, but since the money ran out, she was about to bounce. I mean, that could possibly be true. But if she was really going to leave because of the money, she could have left with way more than a couple hundred thousand. So she really didn't leave with much of nothing. Because at the time when her mother was talking to her, she had like 30 million that her mother had dangling in front of her. Now, they may not have gotten that money, as we later learn. They probably wouldn't. But we'll we'll see, you know, if we they do have a spinoff plan, we may see guest appearances of Franklin. We may not. That's something we all hope for with uh, power, right? book two ghosts for the first season maybe we'll see ghosts return <laughs> and that didn't happen right so it ain't never gonna happen uh, at least not that i could foresee so uh you know man it's messed up uh 100 said this happens all the time in real life when women ends up with the money <laughs> what did they bounce Leave him looking looking stupid. Uh, I don't know about this. I mean, they built her up to be down for him. I guess they showed her with the, you know, getting choked out. About to have a choke slam like The Undertaker. And then that showed us, I, in my opinion, that she, you know, that was her breaking point. She'll help you cook some bologna fry bologna and even be damn near broke and be involved with all kind of other stuff. But when you put your hands on me now, like her mama done said, he coming unhinged. Ain't no telling what he may do. And I mean, damn, it's a, it's a wrap, you know? So I think that's what it really is. Um, Sweet Brown Sugar said, who got, I, I want to know who got that 73 million, Psh, that damn bank, that bank got that money, I'm pretty sure, because that was dark money, and the CIA, yeah, old boy knew about it, but he might not have even thought it was worth it to go through all of that, he might have been like, man, I don't even want to touch nothing that Teddy had to do with it that anything Teddy had to do with, you know? So he may not even mess with it. Um, I do like how the cinematography was done in this episode, like when Franklin was in the bank and he found out that V had already came and took that, that money off of them properties and they just had the rotating camera going around him to show like his head was spinning like he just couldn't believe what he was hearing. Uh, I mean, damn, man, that was crazy. Then how they would show Sissy and Franklin, and they would go out and see the few split and things going on. It's just, yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Um, a good good episode. At first, I was wondering uh, when it started, like, man, why are they still showing what's going on with Sissy? Like, man, they wasting time on this episode. We we could be seeing how some other stuff unravel. But it played out kind of perfect on what they did. Um, and I I ain't going to trip on it. They did the time jump, um, which it does. What I said in my last recap about Franklin uh, on that last uh, video, I said he really doesn't have anybody after him. So that's what's messed up about him not getting that money because he really didn't have anybody go after him. Now, they had a case on Louie. Remember, they was pulling up at her door. Now, if she would have started to talk and tell them, then maybe they would have started to get something on Franklin. But by that time, because she was on the run, Franklin, he uh, 
was out of the game and all of that stuff by then. So, I mean, damn, man. He almost, that's like them TV shows. I almost got away with it. He almost got out of being the biggest dope dealer on the West Coast for a few years and getting out the game with a multimillionaire. And he was just 10 seconds away on a phone call from pulling it off. Damn. Now, nah, that's messed up. Now, Oso did get out of it clean, and I was wrong. I said Oso would end up in jail or dead, and uh, I definitely thought that he was messing up when he was checking that uh, that answer in service, and, and she was saying, uh, you know, she still loved him. Oso was hitting that, wasn't he? He was jumping off the top rope and that cootie cat. She loved that boy. I called back two years later. I don't know if you check it down certain service, but I still remember it and I love you. You want to slam me? Come on, you do it. I like it. You give me the pal driver. Yes. He up in there teaching little ninos how to wrestle. He's still checking. <laughs> also put the full pops on that ass. She was remembering him, boy. You are the base. You you are the base also. I love you. <laughs> anyway, I just knew we was going to see a scene of him pulling up or something with some flowers like, hey, I come for you in North Carolina. Next thing you know, uh, we see the damn feds getting him. Or... He going to give his address or something like, yeah, give me a call. We can hook up. Next thing you know, it come old boy. Yeah, you thought I was going to forget about two female agents dead? So who knows? We may end up seeing also uh, in the spinoff and Aunt Louie. Because we see Aunt Louie's story. Is still going as well as also. We saw Aunt Louie, she over there on the run, barebacking it. Yee, get it up. <laughs> hey, the DEA don't play, do they? Don't they? They own it. They own it. So, I don't know, man. I think that uh, we may see something with that. I'm surprised that Aunt Louie didn't go down south and try to bang in Little Rock. I thought that that might have been maybe her best move. But then again, she probably is smart for not doing that since the feds, well, this, the DEA was looking for her. So if she have went there, I mean, they'll probably check your next to Ken first, and then they would have busted her, and she'd have brought the heat on her people. So I guess that was smart not to go there. So, yeah, damn, Louie. I wonder what she going to do. She she need to try to get a damn. She can't get out of the country now because she don't have a passport. She need to get smuggled out of the U.S. <laughs> they always find in the coyote. You need a coyote. You had to pay the coyote to get in, senor. She go at the tunnel out of the U.S. Instead of tunneling in the U.S., she going to be tunneling out. <laughs> hey, but she got to get the hell out of there. She should have tried to, as a woman, it's a lot easier to change your appearance, change your hair, do a little different things, this, whatever with some makeup or whatever and things and you could look so different now versus uh you know a man you get a different haircut or something now if you start getting elaborate disguises and things then you know a guy can change up but a woman change your hair color a couple different hairstyles or something and look totally different so she should have did that. Um, Damien Kenny say Snowfall is summarized by the song America Has a Problem <laughs> by Kilo. Search for this song on YouTube. Well, there you go. 
I don't know who that is or the song, but I won't say the title is not true. But again, it's no place on earth that don't have a problem. But we do have some. That is for sure. Uh, don't trip. I said it said I'm glad most of them survived and I'm excited for the spinoff. I am glad that most of them survived as well. And I am interested to see how the spinoff turns out. Um, with it being the time jump of five years, and then we didn't learn about little yo-yo. You can't play with my yo-yo. I'm going to call you yo-yo. Going back, going back, going back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't know. He's he trying to do something at the shelter, so maybe that's where we'll see Wanda and Yo-Yo. He might, you know, we may see Franklin. He may follow the drip, end up there. Hey, Leon, follow the drip. <laughs> you got ten dollars. <laughs> 20 <laughs> big ball, 20 dollars. Damn, man. This dude really handled millions and was down to getting 10 bucks. It's hard out here in life, man. And, uh, you know, this story was very good in the sense that it taught another lesson if people was paying attention um some people um but may not have thought about it this way but is that uh you never know who it is you could be dealing with some people may be at the bottom right now and you may be in a better situation you never know if the roles could be reversed five ten years later you know, Lord willing, it's not. And vice versa. You know, you could be on the top. Like I say, reverse them roles. And uh, Franklin was at the top. Had security. Being chauffeured. Had the penthouse. Jets. Millions of dollars. Driving Lincolns. Making big deals. Moves. Paying for all kind of stuff. And now little teenagers laugh at him. Women crackheads take a little crackhead little dookie behind his house. <laughs> she was taking the dookie. I live here, man. Damn, man. Wow. He should have at least. Damn, man. See. It's this little new poster I got on my wall, <laughs> and it's real. And the reason I say that is this is one of the – it's from a movie, <laughs> but it's a real saying, and I'll sum it up. The movie is Rocky. <laughs> it is what Rocky said. <laughs> I got to translate it because you won't probably understand it, but <laughs> – Basically, to sum it up, you say that, uh, you know, ain't nothing tougher than in this world than life and that it's going to hit you hard and it's going to hit everybody hard. And that's not what it's about, though. It's about how hard you can get hit and get up and keep fighting. And now we know Rocky never blocked. But anyway, you know, Franklin got hit real hard, real, real hard. And he gave up the fight. He gave up the fight, man. And I know it's said than done in life. And people always say what they would do if this happened to them. They wouldn't do if this happened to them. But if that would have been me in that situation, I would have figured out something, man. With I don't know, man. Maybe rent that place out. Did some hey told Leon, hey, put me back on the block then. I'm about to work for you again then and rise back up the ranks. 
and stack my little pile again or something and start all over from zero again or something. I would have did something like something to that effect. I wouldn't have just gave up. Um, that would have never been an option. And who knows, maybe I would end up dead or in jail because I never gave up and uh, kept doing something. But I, I wouldn't have did what he did and just give up and drink it away. Um, so, you know, that, that right there, damn, man, sad, 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 sad. And then D Renee, you got a good point. He got the nerve to, to talk about Wanda talking about how she was used to be hitting the pipe, her first love. Look at you. Look at you. You know, teeth messed up, falling apart. Taji Lyles, it's, this is true. He is not old. Franklin Saint, even with five years after this. How old is Franklin? You all let me know in the comments. How old is Franklin Saint at the end of this season? At the end of this show, you got to add in five years to whatever he was before uh, this episode. So what was he then? 25? 30 now? So, yeah, he's still young, and he still could come back, but it depends on where his mind is. His mind is fried right now because he thinks the CIA and everybody watching him and this and that. And uh, I don't know if he could, he could technically bounce back because he's still alive. And as long as you're alive, then who knows what may happen. But he got the eye against him. And I think he, he said, fine, sexy brother like me can keep one. <laughs> uh, Malik Kimani Masai. Said karma's a bitch. Franklin started in the ghetto and ended up back in the ghetto. I know, right? He he definitely, damn, he definitely did a whole lot to get out of a situation that he ended up in worse. If he would have never did any of that and just went to school and got his degree and then just got a job. Yeah, he may be only making 40 grand a year or something like that or 60 grand a year, but he'd be happy and alive. Man, how many people wouldn't have had that? Well, I can't say that because Teddy would have found somebody. So you can't say without Franklin, all these people wouldn't have this wouldn't have happened because that was about to happen no matter what. Teddy was still there doing what he was doing. So, um, you know, it just go to show, man, be careful why you do things. I know a lot of people say, and this has become popular, talk about Illuminati or this or that with music or movie industries or different stuff. But in, in reality, it all boils down to what are you doing something for? And you need to know why. Because if you're not really sure, you could end up doing a lot of things for a goal or a result that it really isn't worth it. So he did all of that for money. Money to what? Buy stuff? Plane, cars, clothes, this, then, that. Houses. Was it really worth everything in the end? Look where it cost him. Look where everybody is. Look where his family is. His whole family's been destroyed. Everything's happened. Yeah, everybody think, well, we could have did this. It could have went that way. We could have did that, 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 that. It's this person's fault. It's that person's fault. But, you know, you got to be careful why you do stuff in life. Because if you ain't really knowing why and have that really a solid reason why, then you may end up doing things and not even realize it 
And then looking back, like, man, I shouldn't have did this. I didn't, I shouldn't have did that, you know. So that's the thing with they say with the industry or movie industry, where they would talk about like uh, casting couch or things like that. It's because people are trying to get an end result and they ain't really focusing on what they really willing to do or not do. And then they do things they probably would regret or wouldn't do in the normal circumstance. But because they focus on the wrong things, end up losing themselves. You could get taken advantage of. So, you know, I don't know. D. Renee says, was V married to Franklin? I thought they was married. I thought they were married, but they didn't have a wedding. But I thought that they were married. Uh, I, maybe not, because you would think they'd have to have divorce papers in a divorce settlement. But then again, if she just bounced and left and went to another country, was like, screw you, then I guess what could he do? I guess nothing, right? Taji Lyle say that's what they call lost in the sauce. That's that's the good version of it, getting lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? So that's why they another thing they say, be careful on who you see on the way up because you can see them on the way down. It would be something if we would have saw what's that girl's name again that uh, Franklin killed her father, the cop. And uh, she, he went to go see her with the with the limp, with the cane. It would have been crazy if we would have saw her see Franklin looking all broke up like he was at the end. And been like, Psh. damn. But, you know, it is what it is. Melody, there it is. Mel, y'all be on it. But uh, that would have been something right there. Um, Black Pride say even Pablo Escobar, dude was making $420 million a week, died broke. Nobody wins at the end. Hell, what's uh, El Chapo? I mean, you can have, he ain't dead, though. El Chapo's still alive, I believe. But, uh, but um, anyway... When you uh, have uh, so much, you, you can only take but so much with you, you know? So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, but going back to this episode, um, recapping a little bit, man. So, it started off, like, immediately after what happened. And we saw Franklin making that phone call in disbelief. Which I was surprised, but then again, he went to a pay phone, and back then they weren't checking pay phones. And then you would have, they would have had to have, with what she did, they wouldn't have checked for him. Um, even though I thought that fake ass Johnny Cochran was gonna probably pop Franklin, uh, because he was coming at Franklin once Franklin came to one of her court cases. And saw that she was going in. She's trying to talk on record about the CIA. <laughs> they like, man, get her ass out of here. So, um, pretty much, I thought old fake ass Johnny Cochran slash uh, Shaft detective over here was going to probably pop Franklin. But. He wasn't. Franklin told him, get up out of here. So, you know, that was that for him. Um, the next thing we see, Franklin just self and destruct, grabbed up uh, V. But what made him really start to realize she was on some bull is that we saw uh, Stephen Williams pop up. Which I was like, okay, Stephen Williams, the OG, said he coming through about that cash deal. He's like, what? And then she tried to, so she probably was about to bounce with that money. Cause she, but she said she was testing the waters. Was she really testing the waters or 
was she, I don't know, about to take that money and run. Now, that pissed him off, and he's got rid of all his properties and then took that money so he could pay for that downtown property. And then, like, she took that money because after he put his hands on her, so she took that money that he had from liquidating them properties, I guess, and then he was coming another hundred some thousand on what the downtown party. And so then she took already got the same loan on the downtown property. And that's when he realized what was happening and tried to contact her. But she had bounced. And that was the same day he put his hands on her. At least he ain't changed his clothes yet. <laughs> so she ended up getting away with at least a few hundred thousand. At least a few hundred thousand. And so, uh, you know, damn. She, but as smart as she is with the money compared to what he was doing, she ain't going to roll it into the drug business. She'll probably do something else. Who's to say that five years later, she might be a millionaire now. You know, um, she probably properties and stuff and managing and this and that. And without him involved, she got her own office somewhere and she's sitting pretty. Probably raising Franklin's son to be some little young, smart business tycoon. And, you know, Franklin, truth be told, had he had different circumstances occur in his life, could have been a CEO somewhere, could have ran a Fortune 500 business or company, but it's not how it shook out for him. Oh. Don't have my water. Anyway, um, it'll be tripped out to see um, if we ever see or hear from them again. Um, we could always hear from them again and never see Franklin again uh, on the show because I think Damson Idris is a, is a star. I think that he can do movies. I actually think that he would be good Black Panther. They talking about having him replace Jonathan Majors uh, in, in the Marvel Universe. Um, I spoke with some people before and about Black Panther, and it seemed like he would be good. So I think that he may not come back to TV full time after this show. I think he's moving on to the next level. Um, but with that being said, um, you know, damn, Franklin, that's messed up. So now we saw before they started to do the time jumps that now his man, top, top not found the file that he'd been looking for, but then told him he ain't looking for V no more. He done, and he done with Franklin. At first, I thought Franklin was going to shoot him. But, you know, he didn't. We see the file, and who is it but Peaches with a nasty little heroin goozing out of his arm. And this dude got a nice house that he didn't popped with his little money, stolen money, $5 million in cash. And so Franklin walk up on, hey, Frank could say. And so once he talking about the money or whatever, and he got him at gunpoint, he play it cool and tell him he got a safe in the back. I mean, this house has no furniture. It had one couch. <laughs> It looked almost in disrepair. And, I mean, it was just a nice junkie den. And and sure enough, he tell Franklin he got a safe in the back. My whole time, I'm thinking ain't no safe in the back, which I later learned I would have been wrong. But he almost ended Franklin because when he got up, he had that, that little snub nose right there underneath him. And he opened fire on Franklin's ass with that boy. Blah! 
but Franklin, woo, caught him with two to the chest. And woo, he even had to check his own damn diaper because he sure thought he caught one. <laughs> Franklin had to pat himself, make sure he ain't get popped. And then once he had to make sure he ain't get popped, now he go and look in the room, which he started to check the rooms. I ain't think he did a good sweep of that house. And then he should have locked all the doors and other stuff. But I had a feeling something might happen. But anyway, it didn't seem nothing was going to happen for a second. And he did find the safe. But one thing I saw is that, like, man, he is tweaking, drinking all in there, touching on everything. I'm, I was even live chatting. He leaving too many fingerprints everywhere, and he he is in that house too long, which that's giving more chance for somebody to show up. So now he can't get into the safe. He desperate. That damn safe was worth shit more than the money that was in it. But anyway, he decided to call a locksmith to come to the house, and he put his body in another room or something. Which, you know, that was kind of smart. But at the same time, crazy. Why are you having a person come to this house, another witness that can see your face, anything can happen in this house. And so desperate, he have to, it's been too long. You know what I mean? He should have realized that a junkie like Peaches can't hold on to that money that long. It's been way too long. Had it have been maybe a month, maybe, he could have got some money back. But it was a while. It had been months. Probably even a year had passed, right? How long has it passed since Peaches robbed Franklin? You all let me know what you think in the comments. I think it's been close to a year or more. Um, anyway, he ended up calling this Spanish locksmith dude to come over. He like, yeah, man, I could have went over here, but I feel like I'm a safe, crack a safe, man. I feel like I'm a bank robber. Hey, <laughs> yeah, right. You is. <laughs> he had him drilling the safe, about to open it. He thought everything was cool until this damn junk. Then where's features? Peaches, where's Peaches? Next thing you know, Franklin, bow, wow. If I was old boy to safe crack, he should have jumped out the damn window. I mean, he was dead either way because Franklin would have just jumped out the window and held him at gunpoint, made him come back inside and made him finish and then did what he did. But, you know, um, dude was scared. He ain't know what to do. I knew something, Franklin, first of all, going there in broad daylight made me think some things, first of all. But then, you know, he ended up, you know, I guess the desperation took over. So, you know, next thing you know, he tell dude to finish up. He ain't going to hurt him. And I think if it would have been enough money in there, he probably wouldn't have hurt dude. But... Once he saw how little money was left, Peaches had that little stack of money in that big-ass safe. <laughs> Having that big old safe would get you killed more than, than the money. Because people thought it was more in there than it was. And he ended up having 12 grand. 12 grand. I thought that Franklin was going to shoot him in the face. When he saw how little it was, just out of frustration. But what he did was actually smart. And he told him to put the money in the pad in his pants. Put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> put the money in the pants. It. Next thing you know, we see he he letting him go. I'm like, damn, Franklin just gonna let him go. He like, I got three kids, man. I don't want to go. Don't do it. He let him let him leave. Next thing you know, two to the chest, execution style. Bam. He died for nothing. Just so that Franklin could be an alcoholic. 
Franklin would have been better off going to jail than killing that dude to get away to to do what? To do what he did? Damn, man. Franklin, that was hard right there. You killed that man for nothing if that's what you're going to do. You could at least did something better with your life if that's what you ended up doing. But he took out Pablito. Gave him two tacos to the to the to the chest. Damn man, that was dirty. Felt bad for man, my man's Franklin man. And Peaches, I just knew we wasn't gonna see or hear from him again. But I am glad that we did. Man, I'm glad we did because I did not want to just let them lead that out there and we just thought he got away scot-free um so i'm glad that he gone i wonder what happened with buckley i wonder how his story ended i guess we may never know it's messed up what happened with louie and how her story ended she got to work on the run at horse farms hiding in stables DEA on her ass for life. Damn. That's messed up. So, all right, let me look. I'm looking at this. A lot of them say that Peaches has had that money for longer than two years. Okay. Oh, yeah, Scully also. We don't know what happened about Scully. I'm surprised they didn't it's so many things they could still wrap up, I guess, in the spinoff if they decide to do flashbacks to, to fill in the gaps of the last five years, maybe. I don't know. But we could just see it from their angle, Leon and Wanda, since we now know Franklin ain't really do nothing with himself for the last five years. Need to be seeing this side of the story. So I guess the spinoff could be pretty good without Franklin because they could just cover what Leon and Wanda and everybody else, no neck Johnson and what happened to everybody because we know Franklin ain't do a damn thing for the last five years. So Scully and everybody, we could find out what happened with them. So hopefully that's something that they do. Um, have the show pretty much going on. With everybody that's left except for Franklin. So maybe they just skip the next five years so that we know what happened with Franklin. And then they can backtrack five years and then we can figure out what happened with everybody else, I'm guessing. Um, but that would be interesting. Lisa Phillips say, man boy was right the whole time. Man Boy was right the whole time. What did Man Boy say and what was he right about? That he ain't going to what? Be no nothing or end up just like everybody, like the people he's serving? What did Man Boy say? I can't remember. He didn't say it so much. LSW, what happened between Leon and Wanda? Yeah, he said it was a lot to get into, but. She probably got fed up with him probably taking a while to leave or maybe he being a little yo-yo coming back and forth. She probably tired of him coming back and forth. So I don't know. It may be a few things. We'll see. We do know she is in the spinoff, so we will hear her side of the story. And, and what happened with her, they got a Philly in the last five years. I mean, even if they, you know, started off at the fifth year, they got to give us some type of backstory Philly in or something. Dale uh, Traverso, you say, Franklin, tow that house up. I know, right? There, he had the damn stove in the backyard, the refrigerator. It didn't have no electricity. It was all dark in there. 
barely any furniture. He probably tried to sell all that stuff. Out in L.A., it'd be different because they'd be having stuff like that in the backyards and things because it doesn't rain that often. It's dry, you know, so you'll see things like that that you may not see in other places as often. Although you go in any poor area across America, you buy a damn refrigerator or somebody backyard or a stove or something. So I guess that ain't uh, too out of place. But yeah, it frankly really didn't tweaked out. Um, Black Pride, you say Leon gonna be talking to the youth about Franklin rise to the top and fall off. Then one of them going to ask, where is he now? And we going to find out Franklin died. Damn. Yeah, that'd be something else. Or he, he a smoker. Or that they all just laugh at him in the liquor store and treat him like a bum and a, a nobody. When he was the one of the most respected people in the hood at one time. And talking to him that way that was that was a no-no you know and uh it's just very interesting because again i said this earlier growing up in chicago um now i was a kid younger in the 80s so i remember seeing older people and things and at the time I kind of knew what they was doing, but as a kid, you don't really know, but you know. So then as you get older, you can look back and understand, oh, yeah, that's what they was doing. Just like, you know, when you was a kid and smelled some weed and then you get grown and you smell it, you'd be like, that's what my people, my, that's, that's what they was smoking. <laughs> so uh, same thing, you kind of put two and two together. Oh, that's what the hell was going on. And so, uh, you know, but some of those people that I knew and seen that were doing so well, by the time I was in my teenage years, which could have been 10 years later or so, they were in bad condition, some of those people falling off. Now, it wasn't because of the same reasons. It's normally because they was dipping in their own supply or other things but they weren't where they was or some that i know that did last for a long period of time now to this day don't have any of that and like it's a struggle they gotta work and do other things so it's a lot of different levels of being at the top and falling off and so to see him fall off like that, that is a possibility and did happen to a lot. Everybody didn't go to jail for life or get killed. I know they try to paint it as those are the only things that is going to happen, the only two options. But truth is, it is a third option, being a junkie as well as a fourth one surviving. Um, but the odds for each are different. So a lot of times most people get dead or in jail, or that's what most people hear about the most. So people think that's what happens the most, but this could be very much one of those options. And I, I hope a lot of people, uh, that are young and may, of course, I don't think this happens that way but if somebody was interested in this type of thing and was younger i hope they realize that it is another option out there um and so you know but i don't know if tv or music and things really influences a person as much i think maybe music more than movie and tv but it all comes together, you know, probably. So I'm not sure. But anyway, um, enlightened original man said he turned into Alton who uh, in the way he turned into who into Alton 
who was in the beginning both broken by the system. Yeah, that's true. They both ended up crushed by the system. Alton by the CIA and Franklin by, I mean, Alton by the FBI and Franklin by the CIA. And they both turned to the bottle to cope. So, you know, that is uh, sad and uh, unfortunate. And uh, that girl, what's up, that girl? She said, hey, Jay, they say it's death or jail. But no one guessed Franklin would be an alcoholic bum. You know what? I know I didn't guess that. Um, I didn't guess that one. So I'll be the one of the ones to admit. I don't always say I got everything figured out or I was the one that came up with this or that. If I didn't know, hey, I didn't know. It is what it is. So that one I did not guess and I did not see coming. I thought he may get away dead or in jail. Um, being an alcoholic bum didn't cross my mind because I thought he was mentally stronger than that. But somebody in the comments earlier said uh, a great comment that what? Losing $70 million can break anybody. And uh, damn, you know what? It really can. You know, because I think if he was white, he might have committed suicide. But by him already having nothing and being, you know, growing with the struggle, I think he turned to the bottle instead. Because now he back where he started. But what I mean by the white part is not the racistness, but we always hear about the rich white man, so to speak, that loses it all and commits suicide. And that's because it is very hard to go from having it to not having it. It's very hard. Now, Franklin went from not having it to having it to not having it, which may be even worse. But the bad part is why I say it's worse is you worked your way up just to fall right back down. That's worse. The other person never had, never, you know, knew what it was like. So it's very shocking to them. Um, but I think by him going through that made it where he wasn't going to take himself out. Um, but, you know, if it would have been a little different, I think he would have took himself out because uh, that right there. Wow. And, uh, you know, Franklin really still was lucky if he thought about it because he got out. Yeah, he was broke, but he wasn't in jail and nobody was looking for him. He was still able to walk around and do stuff and whatever. And so he could have went back to school. Now he was how old? 25 at this time. Dale Traverso said he went to college but never finished and left at 19. So, uh, like I asked earlier, how old is Franklin when the show went off the air? Because it was five years later, so that means he was around, I think, he's about 30. Um, which means he's about 25 when Teddy dies, which is kind of old to be going to college, but he had nothing. And I mean, it was a better fallback plan than uh, what he did. Hell, if he would have went back to school and really worked at it, he could have got out in three years. That would have been two years of working in whatever he was trying to work in. And then we could have saw five years later him doing that. But instead, them years went by fast. And uh, I will tell you that when you go through an, a traumatic experience, and, uh, and he definitely went through a traumatic experience, 
the days fly by. They are long in the time. So here's something. Days are long and the years are short. So as each day goes, it may seem long, but they fly by fast. And I bet you them five years ticked off to Franklin probably feels like three months, a month to him. Um, next thing you know, you look up, it's been five years. So, you know, I know I can feel that way about some stuff and I can look up and now I can't believe how much time has passed. So I definitely think that's what's happened with him. He don't even realize it's been five years. Yeah. He talking about the property taxes and this and that, but. At the same time, he not realizing how long it's been and everything. And it's just, man, <laughs> little Jay. Now, this is funny. He says, little Jay says he should have joined the CIA college program that Teddy offered him. And he could have possibly done what Teddy did leading the organization. <laughs> that is funny. For a lot of reasons. For one, he was dreaming. That episode wasn't real. Which is one reason I didn't like that episode. Because it was so out of place with the rest of the show. And throwing in a whole alternate universe episode. That ha never happened. Nothing in that ap episode actually happened as far as that college stuff. That's why he was shot and, and kind of like in his own mind, daydreaming type stuff or whatever. But no, he never met Teddy at college. He never was offered a CIA program. <laughs> and uh, that never happened. But I'm laughing because why did they put that in there? That's, that's the one of the worst episodes to me of this whole show. It's probably the worst episode to me because it was so out of place with the show. At first, I didn't know what the hell I was watching. I'm like, what is this? I, I was like thrown off. Like, man, what? So, yeah, I didn't like that. I'm glad they didn't do that anymore in the show because that was that was way off. It's all good. Yeah, that, that never happened. And yeah, it threw me off when I was watching it in the moment because I was thinking like, why are they doing this? This this is, so what, this whole, and that was the season finale of like season four or three. I'm like, why they do this for a season finale? So, you know, I ain't like that. Uh, Malik Kimani, he said, now we have an answer to what happened to Peaches. That Peaches got cobbled. That Peaches got cobbled, baby. Blow. <laughs> yeah, man. That's messed up. D. Weave, you say it ended like Game of Thrones. I mean, I think it ended better than Game of Thrones. I mean, let's see. Let me ask you all, on a rating of 1 to 10, how satisfied are you with this ending? You all can put a, you know, rating on there and let me know a number of 1 to 10. How satisfied are you with the ending of Snowfall? Um, I'm satisfied. I think there was a good ending. I mean, we can't always have it our way. I think that uh, at least Franklin's not dead. And yeah, it is a small chance of him getting his life together. But he is only 30 years old, give or take. Uh, at least he's not dead. And, uh, you know, they actually kind of got away with it. Well, Louie didn't, but um, 
I, I'm okay with it. I'm not bad with it. On a one to ten for this ending of how the show ended, not my Mosco for this episode, which I am about to do next, but on how they wrapped up this series overall. Um, I would give it a nine, actually. I really enjoyed this last season. I like what they did. Um, and I like that they didn't use the same tried and true. He dies and, and shot by, you know, somebody or whatever the case or in jail. It is unfortunate that he's, uh, you know, wino, but I can't say I haven't seen that ending for the the villain or bad guy, the our anti-hero on any of these shows. So I'm gonna give it uh give it a nine. Um Dale Traverso said two time jumps though. So it's nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I guess so. Wait, was it? So it wasn't 84. I thought it was 86. It's probably 1991. Plus they had the, them young kids say, Wait, what set you from? Uh, so I don't know. Maybe. Malik Kimani say it's been about one and a half years since Peaches bounce. So yeah, that money been gone. That money been gone. Lisa Phillips, wow, I, man, I got a short memory, girl. BMF did just kind of do that with Lamar, didn't they? They made him go out like a crackhead, and now we saw Franklin go out like a wino. Damn. That is, wow. Damn. That is a great, great point, huh? But those are two similar stories based off of true stories. <laughs> I can't say both off of true people or this or that, but um, but wow, they did just do that in both of this. I forgot about that. Um, boys in the hood. Yeah. They walked by and, uh, that was probably going to shout out to John Singleton because they walked right past and he was like, y'all ain't gonna win. Nothing. And I think John Singleton did win something for it. Yeah. They was filming boys in the hood. Yeah, and then it said for John. Um, so then that means that that was what? 91 then, like I said. Because Boys in the Hood came out in what? 92? So, you know, yeah, that was Boys in the Hood. And Boys in the Hood, I remember going to see that at the movies. You know what I'm saying? Uh I think they didn't kill Franklin for John also, which I'm glad. Don't kill off Franklin. Yeah, 91. That's what I thought. I thought that they was in 1986. So, yeah, they about 91 right now. Franklin then fell off. He was the king of the 80s and the 90s fall off. Yep. Which is about on point to when I was seeing some of the people that was doing things in the 80s now not doing so well yep so yeah that that was something uh the time jumps were a little off came so many back to back you kind of cut it up which is why franklin was like five years i guess to add it up for everybody because <laughs> it was what one year then a three, then another one. So that's a lot. I was about to run out of fingers. <laughs> but, you know, overall, 
it was okay with the time because we saw Franklin didn't do nothing in that time period. And that's our main person. And since they're going to do a spinoff, I'm going to let it go. And uh, I guess that's the way that the movie and TV business goes now. You got to leave a little something so that people tune in to the spinoff to see all the things that they missed and get those questions answered. So we they wrapped up Franklin. And if they do the spinoff where they rewind jump, instead of doing a time jump, do a rewind jump. Um, then at least for the first few episodes, we can find out what happened to all of the other people that we watched. So, yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, CJ Wood said, where's Sissy? What you mean, where's Sissy? She ain't getting out of there. Sissy going to get damn near life in jail. Even if she got 20, 30 years at her age, she at least 50. So she ain't getting out till she in her 70s if she lucky. So, yeah, it's over with uh, for Sissy. Sissy, yeah, it's a wrap. But uh, at least she was happy for Leon, and she did tell Leon, uh, go be with your wife. If you want to do something for me, you say you coming here to do something for me, then you go be with your wife. That's what you go do for me. So, you know. All right, I'm about to go ahead and give it my Moscow rating and uh, rate this episode and uh, break it on down a little more. All right, the Mosco is my rating system I use. Real simple, four categories, 25 points each category, give you a total of 100. The first one, the visuals and cinematography, I thought was excellent. Um, how they show Franklin when he handled the news, uh, that V was ripping him off, um, how we saw him falling apart. The things with the bank robber, Pete, just a lot of great camera angles and the way they shot this episode to see the sweat on Franklin's face, all the different things. I'm going to give it a 23 out of 25 storyline and plot. I really like how they wrap this episode up and how we got the – normally I don't like a time jump, especially with so much time and so many – things that we really don't know but they wrapped up franklin's side and it is a spinoff coming so um we'll see how they do with the rest of some of these questions i guess the no neck johnsons of the world and scully we'll just have to assume they made it or didn't i don't know um but overall i will give this a 23 out of 25 I really enjoyed how they wrapped it up. Almost one of the best ways to wrap it up, in my opinion. Um, special effects, makeup. They did make Franklin look bad. I mean, you did. did who want to get bit by Franklin in a dark alley? I don't know. I ain't signing up for bite duty, okay? Uh, damn, Franklin. It used to be so smooth, so clean. Stand so strong, so... Normally, they don't use a lot of makeup or special effects, costumes, but I'm going to give it a 23 for this episode because they did more than they normally do. And Peaches and that little pussy arm, that, that, that pussy looked bad. I don't even think R. Kelly want none of that pussy, okay? Uh, last but not least, entertaining and fun factor. Man, this was very entertaining. I'm looking forward to seeing it on Hulu with no commercials. And, man, damn, 
It's sad that it's over, man. I felt bad for Franklin. He said, I'm finally free. I did it my way, not nobody else's way. It's, he's damn, man. Frank, I'm going to give it a 25, which will bring it to a total of a 94 for this episode for my Moscow, a 94. Damn, man. I really enjoyed this season of Snowfall. Damn, Sinidris. Did a great job, especially coming from the UK. Uh, if anybody didn't know that, he's from London. He speaks, hello. Hey, they want me to play in Snowfall. I said, hey, look here, we're going to get some Popeyes. Don't want to take me to get some Popeyes chicken. I said, we'll get some Popeyes chicken. That's how you talk in real life. Dude is a good actor, a very good actor. And I think that in the next 10 years, he's going to be a star, man. If you want to see more Damson Idris, he does have a movie on Netflix called Behind the Wire with Anthony Mackie, where they play like a robot, and it's like in the future. It's like an action movie. It's actually pretty good. I actually, I like the movie. Um, I did do a review for it a couple years ago or whatever, but I think he could do action movies and other stuff. I think he got a bright future. Um, I think all the actors on Snowfall did a good job. Isaiah John and uh, Sissy and Wanda and uh, Jerome. And, uh, man, I just give a lot of props to them, man. They did a great job on the show. And uh, congrats to everybody, the producers and everybody worked on it, put it together. And uh, you know what? I will admit, I didn't know if the show would be good when John Singleton passed away. But I think that they held it down pretty good. I think he died and they had to do, what, the last two seasons without him. So with that being said, I think that uh, they did a really good job holding it together by missing and losing the the creator of the show and somebody that was – a big part of it. Um, so, you know, man, Snowfall. Snowfall was a really good show. Del Traverso said, man, boy, start, started the domino effect to this season. Uh, okay. You say, man, boy. Through Irene's report, probably told Kane that Franklin killed Kev. Ah, oh, well, Kane was dead, so ain't nobody give a damn. But, uh, you know, I'm about to wrap it up. I appreciate everybody for coming through and uh, watching the videos. And uh, I'll be back on the next one. Tomorrow for Power Book 2 Ghosts. And uh, I'll see y'all then. Peace. And I'm out.